My name is David Lauber, and I'm the Dean of the School of Biblical and Theological Studies. And we are so excited to have this performance as a part of our theology conference this year. Um, I am grateful for Karen Lee and Misuk Kim to join us today to say a few words about the performance that we will um, observe and, and listen to and enjoy greatly. Let me just say a couple words about how this came about. Uh, as we were organizing the conference, uh, the, uh, the other faculty who are working on this and I decided that we wanted to have something other than um, just straightforward academic papers as a part of the conference. We knew that Karen Lee is an accomplished poet, so we approached her about writing new poetry for the conference. And in our conversation uh, with Dean Michael Wilder from the conservatory, we became aware that Dr. Uh, Lee had played flute and piano uh, throughout her college years. And that gave Dr. Wilder the wonderful idea of inviting the Chicago New Arts Trio to set this uh, new poetry to music for this performance. So that's how we arrived at where we are today. I have a couple questions that will sort of orient us as we um, are about to listen to this, this new performance. Um, so first for Karen, um, as you approached the poetry um, that you wrote on wonder. Um, how did you go about doing that? Sure, so first of all, thank you so much, Dean David Lauber and also Dr. Misu Kim for inviting me to join the conversation today. I was absolutely thrilled when you and Dean Wilder invited me to contemplate the topic of wonder for this conference as a poetic uh, point of inspiration. And so I searched the scriptures for the word of wonder. I think I was using the New Living Translation. And there are many, many scriptures in the um, Old Testament and the New Testament too about wonder. And so I, 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 I focus upon four different ones. Of course, the Book of Psalms, because you know those are lyric poems that are singable and, and so related to poetry as well as song. And um, you know the beauty, of, the beauty of God's design really stood out to me um, from one of the Psalms. And then um, His beloved statutes. Also, um, scripture from the Acts of the Apostles and Hebrews about his radiant awe and, you know, very um, just, you know, worshiping God um, in awe of his majesty, his wonder, his holiness. And so I started meditating on the four that I had um, focused upon and writing down images. It's, like, it, it's sort of like a Lectio Divina mm -hmm. <laughs> type of process. And then um, these, these four poems came about. Well, they're connected cantos. And I chose the word canto because um, it's a musical term. So I think the highest vocal part that's sung in a chorale is known as a canto. And also in poetry, um, there are sections of a long poem. And so I thought that the resonance um, poetically and musically work together. So the, these are four cantos that are linked together through scripture. Wonderful. Uh, and uh, Ms. Sook, as you approached the composition, how did how did that come about for you? Uh, yes, first, uh, when I got the, the, the second email from Michael Wilder, and he attached with Karen's poetry already, that was only the second email, and she was super fast, and <laughs> that was right before Christmas time, so wow. <laughs> I told Karen, you know, that I could, uh, I wish I could finish my piece with this. <laughs> but unfortunately, I couldn't do this. But anyway, it was uh, good enough of time. And as a composer, usually it takes a long time to find a good artistic poetry to fit in my, you know, compositional you know, style and musical idiom and expressive implication, etc. But uh, when I got Karen's four cantos, actually it was not, you know, imprecise at all. Rather, mm -hmm. very clear and very vivid. By the way, uh, she used lots of colorful words. Mm -hmm. So, such as um, I cannot remember all of them, but uh, first canto, uh, she used uh, brightness of silk and autumnal fire, mm -hmm. auburn and silver. And the last canto, rose-colored on the cross. I mean, all those, you know, uh, 
it sometimes dark, sometimes bright. I mean, those colorful, you know, choice of words um, was very helpful for me to uh, make my musical setting. Yeah. So I used her first canto and the last canto as a bookend. Huh? Yeah. And I used uh, every canto uh, uh, with my, you know, expressive uh, indication. So first canto I used with wonder, second canto with uh, mercy, the third one with power, and the mm -hmm. last one with hope. So I think it was a great match with, you know, the choice of speed and the expression for the performers. Oh, so wonderful. Fantastic. Um, thank you both for, for speaking of the, the specific um, composition of this music and the poetry for this particular piece. I have another question for you, if you're up for that, um, something that I'm sure you could talk about for a long time. So I'll, <laughs> I'll just ask you to say a couple words about, as creative artists, how um, how do you retain a sense of, of wonder as you are composing music, as you are writing poetry? Um, you are both so accomplished and have such vast experience. I guess my question is, how do, how do you keep it sort of fresh and uh, not stale, this creative process? Yeah, that's a wonderful question, Dean Lauber. Um, so for me, it's maintaining an, an open heart, like a, a cup that's always facing up. Um, and receptive. Uh, so, and God is our inspiration. So having humility, um, attitude of curiosity, and, you know, childlike wonder, I think is, is something that's connected deeply to my creative process as well. So whether it's exploring scripture or questions or uh, mystery or imagery or human experience or the nature of God himself, um, these all lead us down paths of um, curiosity and exploration. For me? Yes. Yeah, sure. Sorry. Yeah, that'd be great. I think that for all of us, it's like a, you know, growth chart, like a, we are trying to find and in the middle of the process. So, uh, you know, as Karen mentioned, probably it's a long journey mm -hmm. to find uh, the final goal, but you know we cannot do it obviously by mm -hmm. ourselves. So uh, definitely, with His uh, grace, uh, hopefully we can find uh, the final destination. You know, all together. Yes, in the future. Yeah, and and I'll add too. There's a joy in that too when artists get together in our different media and collaborate. And so when I looked at the score for the very first time that Misa composed, I had this experience of sheer joy to mm -hmm. see, you know, what in due time Carolyn Hart would sing and also Jenny Brown would perform as well. And, and Misa too is part of the Chicago New Arts Trio. And so it, there's a wonder in collaboration too when we come together. And I use that very strong musical and rhythmic uh, motive uh, to express that wonder. So mm -hmm. for example, mm -hmm. That wonder, wonder keeps coming throughout the whole four cantos. Mm -hmm. So we all of, uh, you know, our uh, the Chicago New Arts Trio members are so excited to premiere, you know, all together. Mm -hmm. Ah, fantastic. I, I love that you played <laughs> that little piece there. It, it, uh, it whets our appetite. And um, let me just say again how delighted I am that you, um, created this, this wonderful um, lyric and poetry and music. And I'm looking forward to uh, the premiere of Four Cantos on Wonder by the Chicago New Arts Trio. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
cross, taking on the sins of the world, the bread of life. Thank you.